Hi, I'm David. Let's look at this problem. We're given the set of parametric equations x equals cosine theta plus theta sine theta and y equals sine theta minus theta cosine theta. And we're given a sketch of what this thing looks like and I've reproduced that sketch as best I can here on the board. We're asked to find the points of horizontal tangency and vertical tangency. So what does that mean? That means we're asked to find the points on this curve where the tangent line is horizontal, flat, or the tangent line is vertical. Um, we can kind of see that there'll be quite a few. If I do the vertical tangent lines, it looks like there'll be one right about here. It looks like there might be one right about there. Maybe there'll be another one right about here. And if I do horizontal tangent lines, it looks like there might be one right about here. Uh, maybe another one right here. And we could see that if we let theta go on forever, this would probably keep on spiraling, and we'd have infinitely many points of horizontal tangency and vertical tangency. But how do we find these analytically, not just pictures on the graph? Well, what we can do is we can find the derivative of y with respect to x. dy over dx, well, since these are parametric equations in terms of theta, I could write that as the derivative of y with respect to theta over the derivative of x with respect to theta. Then I can just take the derivative of y with respect to theta and make that my numerator, and take the derivative of x with respect to theta and make that my denominator. So let's do that. The derivative of y with respect to theta. Well, the derivative of sine theta is just cosine theta. The derivative of negative cosine theta, or times theta. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to use the product rule. I'll leave the first alone, theta, times the derivative of cosine theta, which is negative sine theta, plus, now I'll leave the second alone, I'll leave cosine theta alone, and the derivative of theta is just 1. Okay, so that's the derivative of y with respect to theta. Now let's do the same thing with x. Well, the derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta, plus, and again, I'm going to have to use the product rule, I'll leave theta alone. Uh, the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, plus, now I'll leave sine theta alone, and the derivative of theta is just 1. So I won't even write that. Okay, and this is what I get. Now, I hope this simplifies, uh, because I'm going to be needing to use this. Well, let's see what I've got. This equals... Uh, cosine theta minus a negative, so plus theta sine theta minus cosine theta. Already I can see my numerator is going to simplify because cosine theta minus sine theta, or minus cosine theta is going to be zero. So these two are going to add to give me zero. Let's see what the denominator looks like. I've got a negative sine theta plus theta cosine theta plus sine theta. And similarly in my denominator, negative sine theta plus positive sine theta add to give me zero. So my derivative is equal to sine theta times theta over cosine theta times theta. Well now that I've canceled out everything with pluses or minuses in it, I can divide through on theta on the top and bottom, and I'm left with just sine theta over cosine theta which is the same as tangent theta. Okay, so the derivative at any xy point here is tangent theta. Now, if I want to find those horizontal tangent points, those points of horizontal tangency, this is where my derivative is going to be equal to zero. Tangent theta is going to be equal to zero. Then I'm going to have a flat line uh, with a slope of zero. Well, I know that tangent theta equals zero at theta equals zero, at theta equals pi, at theta equals two pi, and I could keep on going like that. Well, let's look at what happens. At theta equals zero, I'd have cosine of zero that's negative, or that's positive one, plus zero, so x would be equal to 1, 
sine of theta equals zero, sine of zero would be zero, minus zero times one, that'd be zero, so I'd have the point one, zero. So that's this endpoint right here. That's theta equals zero. Well, that wasn't one of my initial points that I thought of, but I'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, what about at theta equals pi? That must be this next point, right here. And at theta equals 2 pi, that must be my next point, right here. And it doesn't look like I have any other points um, in this curve as it's drawn. Now, I could check theta equals pi and theta equals 2 pi, just like I plugged in theta equals 0 here. And you'll see that you get points that, that roughly amount to these points right here. But let's figure out exactly what those points are. At theta equals 0, I can figure out what my x, y points are. Um, let's see. At theta equals 0, I said that I have x equals 1, y equals 0. At theta equals pi, what do I have? Well, at cosine of pi, that's negative 1, uh, plus pi times 0, well, that's a negative 1, which is right about here. Uh, if I plug in y equals, uh, if I plug in theta equals pi to y, I get sine of pi, which is 0, minus pi times a negative 1. Um, that is a positive pi. And this looks like it could be at the point negative 1 pi. So that makes sense. And let's do this last point, uh, 2 pi. If I plug in 2 pi into x, I get cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. And then I get... Uh, sine of 2 pi, which is 0, times 2 pi is still 0, so I get x equals 1. If I plug in 2 pi into y, I get 0 minus 2 pi times 1, which is a negative 2 pi. And it looks like this could occur right about at negative 2 pi and an x value close to negative 1. Again, this is just a sketch, but it's pretty close. Okay, so these are my points possible points of horizontal tangency. But I mentioned this endpoint right here. The slope of the tangent line, certainly at theta equals pi and at theta equals 2 pi, is 0. But the tangent line at theta equals 0 is undefined because it's an endpoint. I don't know that this curve keeps on going, and in fact it doesn't. Um, this is an endpoint right here. So while it's a good candidate, this point is not actually a point of horizontal tangency because the tangent line is undefined here. The slope of the tangent line is undefined here. Okay, so we have our two points of horizontal tangency. Now let's find our points of vertical tangency. Well, I know I'm going to have a vertical line if my derivative dy over dx is undefined. So I want where is tangent theta undefined? Well, I know what tangent theta looks like. I know that it has asymptotes at pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, at 5 pi over 2, and I could keep on going. But I know that in my picture I only have 3, so maybe those are the only 3 I need. Well, let's check. What do I get when I plug in pi over 2? Well, if I plug in theta equals pi over 2 into x, I get cosine of pi over 2, which is 0 plus pi over 2 times 1, which is just pi over 2. And I look at this and I think, okay, well this first one could happen at about pi over 2. Uh, let's figure out the y value. If I plug in pi over 2 into this, I get sine of pi over 2, which is 1, minus pi over 2 times 0. Well, that's just 1. And this looks like this could be my first vertical tangency. My first point where the horizontal or where the tangent line is vertical. Let's look at 3 pi over 2. Let's see what that gets me. Well, if I plug in 3 pi over 2 in for theta here for x, I get cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0, plus 3 pi over 2 times negative 1. Well, that would be a negative 3 pi over 2. So x should be negative. And I look over here. I definitely have a vertical point when x is negative. Well, let's plug in 3 pi over 2 into y. Sine of 3 pi over 2, 
uh, that is negative 1. Uh, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so this is just a negative 1. And I should verify that that makes sense with my picture, and, and yeah, that looks like it could be about negative 1, about 1 below the x-axis. Okay, my last point happens at 5 pi over 2. Let's see what I have. If I plug in x, theta equals 5 pi over 2 into x, I get cosine of 5 pi over 2. I might have to think about that a little bit, um, but that's definitely 0. Uh, plus 5 pi over 2 times sine of 5 pi over 2. Now, 5 pi over 2 is 2 pi plus another pi over 2. It's 4 pi over 2 or 2 pi plus another pi over 2. So plugging this into sine theta or cosine theta is the same as plugging in to uh, pi over 2. But I also have this theta con to contend with. So I've got 0 plus 5 pi over 2 times 1, which is 5 pi over 2. Finally, I need to plug this into y. Sine of 5 pi over 2, we said, is the same as sine of pi over 2, which is 1, minus, well, cosine of 5 pi over 2, we said, was 0. So this is going to be 0. So I'm going to have a, a height of 1. And it looks like I have a height. I might not have drawn it perfectly, but a height right here at about 1. So for this curve, x equals cosine theta plus theta sine theta, and y equals sine theta minus theta cosine theta, we have two points where the tangent line is horizontal, and we have three points where the tangent line is vertical in the graph that we're given. Thanks for watching.